Okay, I'm going to be painting today on Arsh 140 pound knot surface. It means it's got slight tooth to the paper. Not sure if it's uh, perfectly suited to the subject, but we'll give it a go. Um, as you can see, the rose is quite complicated. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a go at this because basically I don't, I don't want to go back to where I was before. I actually want to move forward. Um, that means I don't, I want to go straight into tackling things I perhaps would have avoided uh, when I was last painting. I want to sort of um, be braver, basically, with my subject choice and be more varied. Now, roses were one of the things that I really avoided, like the plague. Um, so I'm going to give it a go today. I've got no idea what the result will be like. I hope you just sort of uh, accept it for what it is. Um, but... I'll be slightly experimental with the colours, I expect, because I don't think I'll have the the skill to paint it 100% faithful to the um, to the photograph. So it's just about sort of uh, using an interpretation a bit and blagging it a bit where you need to. But then sometimes you make changes uh, from the photo because you can not improve on the actual subject i.e. because a rose is perfect in its own right but you can make maybe just improve your painting a bit by going a bit by adding some darks or um, not going so dark whatever it might be so we're going to go straight into uh, the drawing i'll start by just sort of sketching the outline of the rose as loose as i can but while i say loosely but while giving me a decent structure to work with because if I don't have a decent structure, when I go to and start painting, I'll be floundering around because I won't have the, the, the skeleton, the bones of the uh, image to guide me, basically. So there's loose and there's loose. So you, you, can, you can draw loosely, uh, but you also need to have a certain amount of accuracy with that drawing. Okay, then. Um, I've got my palette set out, done the sketch. Now it's time to launch in. And paint it. Feel a bit intimidated by this one, but uh, we'll give it a go. Anyway, we had a brief look at the photo, and now I'm going to kind of work out how I'm going to tackle the painting. And I think what I want to start by doing is just putting a, a warm pinkish wash around the centre of the roses, where the warmer colours are. And then introduce some cooler blues around the outside. Um, I won't worry with the background yet. But just concentrating on those lighter, lighter colours. So, I think my best choice of colour for this was I haven't really got the pink in. I'm just going to use a cadmium red. Make sure your palette's nice and clean. Cadmium red and a bit of lemon yellow. There. I might just give the page. A little bit of help with a bit of water, not too much. I don't want my paper cockling and bending too much. Right, so a little bit of a little bit of that pink in there. So my strongest colours are in the centre of the rose. So I'm just gonna just gonna put them in like that. When I see obvious white areas, I'm going to leave it. But this is just the first part, the first, uh, the first pass. So uh, I'm not going to stress over it. I, actually, I am stressing inside, but I'll try not to uh, convey that too much. It's supposed to be a relaxing painting. Just reinforcing some of the red where I see it's a little bit darker. I can lift a bit of colour out in a minute as well, if I choose to. I'm just going to warm, just mix a little bit of the, actually it's cadmium yellow this. I'm sure it'll be fine. I just want a pale wash of that for around the outside. Like so. Now I'm going to start introducing a little bit of very pale wash of cerulean blue. Maybe with a little bit of the pinky colour that's on the palette but basically very pale I don't want this to be too strong on the outside I don't want it to run in and make too many greens on the page 
And in places, again, I can see there's a slight warm, warm tint to it. I'm just going to pop it in. There we go. Again, I can see some warm areas. I'm just going to warm it up in those areas. So basically, it's making a warm grey. And we'll just have a slightly cool around there. I'm just going to soften this a little bit around there. Now I'm just going to sit check to see if I need to lift any colours out anywhere. I don't know that the cadmium red is probably going to let me lift much out. Because it's going to, but we'll be okay. Just where the tightness of the rose, where it's curling. I'm just going to lift a little bit. Bit of colour out there. But that's going to be it really so just to say again the color i'm using here the colors i'm using here so far are cad red cad yellow and uh cerulean blue and that's about it for the time being I'm just going to let that dry and then see how it looks. Okay, that's had a moment or two to dry. So we've got this lovely faint wash over the over the drawing now. Now this is where it kind of gets a little bit more tricky, I think, it does for me. I've got to kind of look at the really, really study your photograph, I think is the key. Maybe even look at it for a day or two before you start painting it and come back to it and just really think about what, what how you're going to approach it and what you're going to do with it. Because for me, these are very complex subjects, uh, more so than painting a boat or something like that. It's a sort of a, a very rigid structure. These have got all flowing lines and they're delicate. So you've really got to study the picture to see what, uh, what's going on. So basically, I'm going to mix a little bit more red and a little bit of yellow in that, not too much. And I'm just going to try and create some of the forms within the rows. This is the slightly dark, darker areas. A little bit of blue on there. Clean water on my brush and just soften it slightly. Ah, dear. This does take a lot of concentration. Especially when you don't know what you're doing. Excuse me. My stomach. Right, I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, ultramarine. Oh, sorry, cobalt blue. Just add it up there with the. Uh, with the red and a little bit of yellow to make a sort of a, a brownier colour just to create a shift change to sort of a darker cooler colour for there a bit more red to it soften some of these edges you don't want too many sort of really hard edges well you know this isn't so much I can hardly say this is giving a lesson how to paint a rose because 
I don't really have a clue what I'm doing myself. I'm just showing you how I'm approaching it for somebody who doesn't have a great experience, have much experience in painting this type of subject. Right, so as I go out to work outside the rose, more towards the edge, the colour becomes slightly colder. So I'm adding a little bit of cerulean blue to that. So you look at it and you see more and more colours. You think, God, how many cut different shifts of colour? It's a bit pinker there. You can't keep following every little shift of colour. Sometimes you just got this because it goes slightly green up here. We'll try and take a bit of it where it's showing a petal off. A petal off. And again round the end outside here. Eventually when we put some background in this will help show the, the, the rows and greater pick out its shape a bit more. I'm sorry if I'm breathing hard. I'm concentrating so much. I'm almost holding my breath every time I paint, <laughs> put the paint down. Um, which is causing me to then gasp for breath after I lift the brush. So I do apologise about that. Okay. We're going to go something like that. Just soften that a bit. Okay. Now we're going to concentrate on this one. And I come around here. It's a nice sort of shadow carved by cast by that petal there. And then Because these, the way these, the photo describes these or shows the um, the petals in a really papery, just beautiful delicateness. And I've seen artists, some artists can just get to get this in no time, but I guess they paint them frequently. And they get to know it. Right, I'm going to leave it at that for a minute because I want to come back and then put some more darks in. Okay, right, I feel at the moment I might make some more adjustments to this once I've done some background, but I think we need to sort of try and see the rose a bit more in its glory. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is start painting a bit of the background so we can see more of the shape of the, the, the petals and stuff like that. So um, I've mixed up a selection of greens here. Well... I've I pulled some Viridian out and some uh, mixed some ultramarine with some cad, cad yellow, some ultramarine, a bit of violet and that sort of stuff. And just to make so I can make some interesting greens. And I'm just going to start off by mixing some of the lightest and just start putting them in in places. A bit of uh, that's a bit of red in there just to do bit of red just dulls your greens down a little bit. Just get some of the, you know, not so, um, not so electric, bit of a cerulean blue, sorry, I need forgot that, just to, uh, for the shadows and stuff like that. Right, I'm just going to paint the background quite lightly at the, and, and, I, and I might stretch it up a bit as I go along, but uh, so now I'm sort of trying to define the petals. Um, so we give the uh, the rose more shape, more form. Make sure we get those nice little cutting bits. You got the nice little frilly edges. I'm not getting the shape perfect, uh, but I'm doing as best as I can. Um, it's a bit darker here. So it's a bit darker. So we'll just pop that in. But this is just like I say a demonstration so the background is just to show the, the roses off at the moment. Could actually go a bigger brush here but I'm just going to keep it to this one. I 
I hope you're staying with this. You know, it's a long time since I've made this sort of a tuitional slash information video. So I hope it's okay. You don't forget, after it's been posted, feel free to ask any questions. I'll do my best to get to everyone to answer. Okay. We might come back and put some more darks in here in a while. As we shift over to the uh, left hand side, it gets a bit cooler um, in colour. There's quite a nice dark just in there. So we'll just use that opportunity to get it in. Gotta go back into here. That I've made too long. I'm just going to try and shorten it slightly. That petal is just not balanced in my that's better so just shortening it slightly to uh, to make it fit in a bit you know right there's some lighter colors up here golds which I don't paint over anything I shouldn't be painting over need to come back and pass over this again it looks a bit flat okay now I'm just as you can see I've started filling in the background a bit just suggesting a few more darks uh, in the in the foliage a bit but it literally is just suggestions to get a bit more movement and uh, what not still got to do it with care though and again I, I kind of like make sure that um doing hard and soft edges as I was looking at actually as I was painting this I was looking at the rose and I was thinking to myself well yeah you know the the, the importance of a of a, of a fair balance of hard and soft edges in any painting is really important um, and uh, this rose would look if it, if it was all just hard edges it would almost look like it was a collage it was cut out um, and that's not what we, well it's not what I want um, so it's all about you know just keeping that balance of uh, of hard and soft I'm not going to do a lot more and um, for the exercise basically let's just talk about what we wanted to achieve here when I started painting I kind of wanted to um, didn't want to go back to painting things I was scared of painting I wanted to really give it a go and be more adventurous with the subjects I paint Perhaps that's why I was just getting a bit bored with it before because I was just painting the same things so now I'm going to be more adventurous I'm going to paint things that I know are difficult for me and um, really try and improve myself and you know I, I really hope that you guys w want to come on on that journey too and uh, we can all learn together um, pretty simple setup we, I've used a uh, a pretty limited palette really cobalt blue cobalt blue sorry ultramarine blue and cerulean blue cadmium red cadmium yellow uh viridian and a little bit of alizarin crimson a bit of burnt sienna so they're all colors that most of you have in in your palette anyway um but yeah i i really hope you've enjoyed it and uh I look forward to if you want if you, you know if you've got any things you want to ask please please feel free to ask things that i don't like is the fact i find the rose a little bit too stark i like to have softened it in places i'm not going to mess with it now it is what it is i like to have softened areas of the rose um maybe i could have been a bit more adventurous in here with some of the shapes but again if you try to do too much you 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 then risk um over complicating it 
I'm not going to really touch that. It's just a suggestion of that rose up there. I don't really want to mess with that too much. But overall, I'm reasonably happy. Like I say, taking on something I wasn't too confident about and uh, the result's not too bad. So, uh, you know, again, thanks ever so much for watching and uh, I'll be back with some more paintings very soon. Bye for now.